Yeah, it's pretty much that. I'm just warning you now. I look at this card for Clash of Champions. Does almost nothing to pique my interest. There's almost nothing that makes me feel like I really need to watch this show on Sunday night. So this preview will probably be even snarkier and more negative than it typically is. So I'm giving you fair warning now, so that way you're not surprised. It saves you your fake outrage. And why would you be so negative about it? If you don't like it, then just don't watch it. Well, I'm giving you the opportunity now. Even though you've technically already clicked on the video, so that counts as a view. That if you don't like the thought of me largely crapping on Clash of Champions, Now's your chance to get out scot-free while you still can. Because let's go ahead and bury this card. Should we? I think we should. Right. There's a Cruiserweight Championship Triple Threat match. Like, why is this even a thing? Like, really? Why are the Cruiserweights even a thing anymore? They're a secondary show on the WWE Network. I mean, how many fans really watch them? Then on top of that, so much of the roster either looks like cruiserweights or acts like cruiserweights, wrestles like cruiserweights. What the hell's the difference? Why would you need a whole entire different division of what you largely already have? I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm sure that's destined for the pre-show. Um, in terms of what else is on the pre-show, I really don't know. I took these notes down on what the card was officially according to the WWE website. As of, I think, Friday morning, I'm recording this Saturday afternoon. I'm sure there's something that I'm missing, but we shall see. The Raw Tag Team Championship. You'd assume this probably would kick off the show. You got Bobby Roode getting saddled with, wait for it, wait for it. <coughs> Fuck off, Ziggler! Going against your tag champs, Braun Strowman and Seth Rollins. I, why put you? Why put the two guys in your world championship match into a situation where they have to pull double duty on this card? You don't have enough other fucking people that you could put in this spot. I just, I know it's Clash of Champions. All the championships are supposed to be defended. Blah 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 blah. But I'm just saying, like, and especially because Rude hadn't done shit. And we most certainly know Dolph Ziggler had just come off a streak of getting bitched out every week. And then all of a sudden they're put together as a random-ass tag team. They beat several other teams in a fucking match. They get this number one contendership. And now they're probably going to win the tag titles. This is stupid. Why is it stupid? Because... <coughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler. Women's Tag Team Championship match. Like, I'm sure the whole purpose of this is just to try and turn Alexa babyface. And maybe that's necessary, but... I have no interest in that. I have no interest in this match. Intercontinental Championship match. Who's it? The Miz versus Shinsuke Nakamura. You know, the vibe for me with Miz as a babyface is never the same as when he's a heel. And I'm sorry, but WWE version of Shinsuke stinks. Accept it. He sucks. Period. So what you're going to get is characters that are miscast in a middle-of-the-road match. That's what you're going to get. And I fucking see that all the time. SmackDown Tag Team Championship. The Revival apparently is taking on the New Day. I must have missed this. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't care. Ugh. You look at a show like this and it just reminds you. Too many championships. Too many titles. Too many people that you don't give a crap about. United States Championship. Cedric Alexander taking on AJ Styles. Really? 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 This is supposed to get me excited? It does not. Either you have Cedric Alexander win and it's stupid, or you waste AJ Styles on Cedric Alexander, and that is also stupid. Speaking of stupid, there's no disqualification match between Eric Rowan and Roman Reigns. Yeah. Not only did you not have either 
Roman Reigns or Daniel Bryan booked to wrestle at SummerSlam. Next go round, you come back and at least you put Roman Reigns in a pay per view match, but it's against Eric Rowan. Man, I just woke up on the wrong side of the bed today, but like this is just annoying me the more and more that I go into it. Like, why well, again, what is there to fucking be excited about? They have tried to force and force and force and force this stupid who ran over Roman storyline, and who cares at this point? It jumped the shark several times. It's crap. Just stop wasting everybody's time and get to the damn point. Him and Daniel Bryan in a pay-per-view match, okay? Golly. What's interesting, though, is when I went to the WWE website, I may have missed it. And if I did, I most certainly apologize because I'm operating under the assumption that Charlotte and Bayley are wrestling for the SmackDown Women's Championship on this card. Yeah, when I went to the website, it wasn't on there. I don't know why. I might have glanced over it. It may have been an omission on their part. I don't know. So I'm going to assume for a moment that it is actually a match. You can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, because frankly, I didn't care enough to worry about journalistic integrity to make sure that it was true or not true, whether or not they had a match on the damn card. And if we're being completely honest here, it's not like you really care about journalistic integrity anyways, because so many of you fucking worship Dave Meltzer's New Japan reach around AEW bending over backwards to take it up the AA fucking ass. Like you, you can't say that you care about unbiased stuff and you care about integrity. So what the fuck does it matter? But... Charlotte potentially turning face, even the thought of that makes you go, ah! Bailey being heel. She needed it. She needs to win here. Will she really win here? Especially since she just, if I remember correctly, got pinned by Charlotte in a tag match on TV this week. That either is an indication of Fuck your heel turn. We're still going to do what the hell we want with Charlotte. Or that is more so a matter of we're going to sit there and tease it. And then we're just, ah, who cares? Like, WWE Championship match. Randy Orton, Kofi Kingston. Like, going into SummerSlam, I was really excited about that match. And understandably so. It was the match that had the biggest story, the best story, the most understandable, relatable history to it. And then they did the finish. Now you've gotten to the point where... If Kofi wins, it's like, eh. If Orton wins, it's not even going to send me into a raging inferno of emotion or anything. Or fake rage or any of that shit. I'll just be like, okay, we move on from one mediocre world title reign in Kofi's to the next one in Randy Orton's. What's the difference? What's the difference? The Raw Women's Championship. Like, I even look at Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch and... Everybody's all excited because Sasha Banks came back. And, you know, I just, she's been putting some spots with these promos that she's done. And I think they've underwhelmed and missed the mark. Um, I'm not really that huge on her to begin with. You know, Becky Lynch, I, I think it's one of these things where it's so often the case, and it's the challenge with the baby face, is that it's the journey and the pursuit of the title is better than the actual reign with said title. So it's so hard a lot of times for baby faces to really be meaningful, long-reigning champions. It's really hard because of things just like that. Because the journey and the overcoming the obstacles can have a much bigger payoff than when they're actually champion. I would assume Sasha's going to win this match. I would assume. Because if she did, it doesn't, then why the hell did you bring her back and serve her straight up to Becky Lynch? Then you could also say, with Becky Lynch being the cover athlete on 2K20, or whatever the hell it is, why are you serving up Sasha Banks right now? Wait a little bit. I don't know. Like I said, I think I just woke up in a pissy mood today. But, I mean, seriously, when you look at this card, what is there to really be excited about? The Universal Championship. Braun Strowman, Seth Rollins. So you already have seen them earlier on in the night, probably one turning on the other, and losing the truck tag titles, or even more idiotic, going through that, and then they retain the tag titles anyways. Like, what the hell? This is a perfect example to me of what you call no-win booking. If Braun Strowman wins this match, it's fucking stupid, 
because you should have just had him beat Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam. But you didn't. So instead of beating the guy that is much more believable as a world champion, he beat Seth Rollins. After all that you've done post-SummerSlam to try and make Seth Rollins cool and newsflash, it's still not working. It's not going to work. It's never going to work. The dude is a fucking nerd. He is a lame. Think about it. I mean, he is. So him beating Seth Rollins does nothing. But then if Seth Rollins beats Braun Strowman, that's also fucking stupid. Because it's yet again another time we've put Braun Strowman in a world title match and he failed to deliver. And it is about at this point in time where you truly start to see the drop off in the interest and the popularity of a character if you don't follow through and go all the way. You have put Braun in this spot many times. There was no real reason not to pull the trigger. You get to the point now, it's damn near almost too late for it to really truly make a difference. So I'm sure those two guys will go out there and bump the hell out of each other and they'll try to put together a good match. But it'll all come down to the finish for me. And it just feels like one of those lose-lose types of situations. I'd almost say the most interesting component of this potentially is, is the Fiend going to interfere in this match for one side or the other? Or is he going to sit there and interfere and fuck the whole thing up? There's no finish. Because the Fiend locks in the Mandible Claw on both of them. Hell, at this point in time, do that. Have a damn triple threat at Hell in a Cell next month. I don't care. Give me something. And Clash of Champions, like, this is the type of show that should be a bigger deal. This is the type of show that should be exciting. You should, in theory, be having your best of the best wrestling on this card. But so many of these guys and gals are so interchangeable. It doesn't feel like the best of the best. Even if it is their best of the best. It doesn't feel like the best of the best. And that's the problem.